Hi guys, today we're going to be reacting to the Odd Ones Out videos. Mm-hmm. Um, we're going to watch at least three. The first one is called My Mom's Cruel and Unusual Punishment. Mr. James, on Saturday morning at 10.03 a.m., you were observed coloring a picture of a... Oh, dang it. Mr. James, on Saturday morning at 10.03 a.m., you were observed coloring a picture of a... Mr. James, on Saturday morning... At 10.03 a.m., you were observed coloring a picture of a dinosaur. Is that true? How do you know I did that? Yeah. Can we go to recess? Even though your yeah, mom had repeatedly asked recess. you to clean up your toys, you disobeyed her and colored anyway? Uh, I plead the fifth. Your Honor, I have no further questions. James, I hereby sentence you to 15 minutes in the timeout corner. I'm not going back to timeout! I'm no scientist, but I think moms play a very important role in society. Without moms, who would drive us to soccer practice? Who else would tell us that it's not okay to eat cupcakes for breakfast? And who else would point at construction workers and say, that's why you need to get a college education, James? <gasps> oh, and I guess they also give birth to you and take care of you, but like, <laughs> Anyone could do that. Yeah. Now, before I talk about how I was raised, I just want to give out this disclaimer that my mom is a great mom. She loves me. At least, she used to. If you asked me when I was 15 if my mom was a good mom, 15-year-old me would have said, no. Okay, but like, when I was little, I'd be talking with my friends, and we would be talking about our parents, and they would say stuff like, yeah, my mom lets me stay up till midnight, and she lets me play really graphic and vulgar video games. Yeah, my mom doesn't care if I wear clothes with skulls on them, and she lets me eat an entire tub of ice cream for dinner. My mom lets me play with knives. And I used to think that their moms were so much cooler for letting my friends have that much fun. But now, as an adult, I realize the sad truth, that these kids' moms weren't cooler, they just cared about them less. I'm not saying every mom out there is perfect, but a mom who takes the time to make a responsible member of society is pretty high up on the good mom list. She's sleeping. She's trying to. She's trying to sleep. Anyways, I love you, Mom, and now I'll immortalize and monetize some of that love. When I was younger and still in need of adult supervision, my mom would take me and my twin sister out to run errands with her. And, as you would expect, we were rowdy and wanted to do our own thing. But my mom was prepared for this. She would bring two plastic baggies filled with ten M&Ms, and every time my sister or I misbehaved, she would eat an M&M right in front of us. And she made sure we saw her eat our M&Ms. She didn't give us a warning, either. If we did anything remotely bad, she would say, Hey! Hey! Look at me! <gasps> and I think that parenting technique is the psychological reason that M&M's are my favorite candy bar. <laughs> I'm a good boy. I'm a good boy. <laughs> Something me and my sister really liked doing was hiding in those circular racks of clothes that they have set up in department stores. Being in the middle of one of those racks is such a surreal experience. I totally recommend it. But my mom didn't like it when we had fun, so she had to reach her arm in and try and grab us. Do you need any help? Oh, no, I'm just trying to get something in the back. There's a really nice belt that would be great for spanking my misbehaving children! I was spanked as a kid. Nothing too bad. I probably deserved it anyway. I don't remember any specific actions I did that earned a spanking, but I do remember outrunning my mom a lot. Another thing my mom did when I was very little was sometimes when she was washing her hands, she would turn to me and go, achoo, and flick water in my face. It really bothered me, but I never spoke out about it. And one day I just couldn't handle it anymore and I started crying. Why are you crying? But I was too sad to articulate how I was really feeling. <laughs> if you ask her about this today, she'll say that she doesn't remember doing that sneeze gag ever, but I remember it. Vividly. So to get back at her, I put a rubber band around the dish sprayer so when you turn on the sink it would spray water at you. Come to think of it, I do remember one reason I was spanked. Every time one of my siblings insulted another sibling or told them to shut up, we would have to pay them 50 cents. This resulted in a really weird dynamic when it came to insults. We would get excited when someone called us a name. Mom, Luke called me a butthole! 
That's 50 cents. Woo! I'm rich! But sometimes us kids would just be messing around with each other. We didn't really mean the insults. So we would feel bad taking someone else's 50 cents. Like someone would say, hey, James, what's six plus six? And I would say, uh, nine, idiot. And my mom would hear me and say, James, that's 50 cents. And my sister would feel bad. So she would insult me back and say, James, y y you're an unpleasant person. Aw. Swear words cost you $5. Oh. That's why I don't swear in videos. But now I can afford it. So, f you, Mom. You piece of f My mom never washed her mouths out with soap. She wasn't that kind of person. But she did threaten to if we swore. And one time after I said a pretty naughty word, penis, she said, if you don't behave, I'm going to get the soap. And I said, I don't care. Soap tastes good. What? All right, you big dingus, shove this in your mouth. You won't do it, no balls. So I bit into it and immediately regretted it. Oh. Now people are eating soap for views. Oh so I guess we never grow up. Did anyone else's parents put a password on the family computer? Because my parents did, and I didn't know we were the only family that did that. We had a rule in the house that we were only allowed to be on the family computer for however long we read a book for. But luckily, I would just read a book for 15 minutes, get my mom to type in the password, and then she would just forget that I was on the computer and let me stay on for hours. And I played a lot of Neopets and RuneScape. Also, I wasn't allowed to have a TV or a computer in my room because then I would have easy access to inappropriate animes. When I was little, cell phones were a thing, but my mom didn't let me have one, so I had to talk to all my friends over a landline. I hope I don't have to explain what that is because that would make me feel really old and I'm supposed to be in the prime of my life. But basically it meant if I was upstairs in my room talking to a friend, my mom could grab a phone downstairs in the kitchen and just join in our conversation completely uninvited. Didn't matter who I was talking to, I'd be having a conversation like this. <sighs> I think the reason I internalize and hide away all my problems is because of how invasive my mom is in my personal life. James, get off the phone and do the dishes. Mom, I'm on the phone! Wow, I can't believe you said that to the person who gave birth to you! So what are you two losers talking about? Luckily, I would almost never be talking to a girl. So at least... That didn't happen. This other time, my mom was giving me and my sister a ride to school, and on the radio, she was listening to the worst subgenre of rock music. Christian rock? Just kidding, you can like whatever you want. Anyway, we were pulling up to the school, and I told my mom to turn the music down. What? Why? Because I don't want people to think I listen to this, mom. You see, I was in junior high, so I cared a lot about what other people cared about. So she turned the music down, but as we stepped out of the car, she turned the volume all the way back up and blasted the music for everyone to hear. Looking back at the situation, I think that's pretty hilarious. GG, mom. These aren't all the times my mom embarrassed me, but those are all the ones I'm going to include in this video. I didn't even mention the time when I was four when my twin sister wanted to do ballet lessons, but she didn't want to do them alone, so my mom signed me up for lessons too. But that's a story for another video. And that video will be titled, Top 10 Reasons I'm Gay. That was a, that was a joke, mom. Love you, mom. You made me like this. And there you have it, everyone. That was my mom again i just want to say that despite whatever i say in my videos that my mom is a great mom i wouldn't be here without my mom she also reads all my scripts so all of my videos are james's mom approved okay well i shouldn't say that she does tell me to take out a lot of jokes and i'm like no they're but they're funny and also speaking of my mom my mom's birthday is coming up so happy early birthday mom and if you guys wanted to wish her a happy birthday that'd be cool too I was serious when I said these aren't all the times my mom embarrassed me. I definitely have enough material to make a part- Buying clothes. I don't think that's the case. Hey man, have you ever noticed that we wear the exact same clothes? Hey man, have you ever noticed that we wear the exact same clothes every day? We don't... we don't wear any clothes. What if we're both just a cartoon character, and that's why our clothing's the same? That's impossible. Cartoon characters' mouths move. We just open our mouths and words start coming out. <gasps> hey guys, did you see my brand new Rolex? <laughs> Are you jealous? Doesn't your phone tell the time? Maybe he never noticed that his phone has a clock in it. <sighs> no one buys a Rolex to tell the time. I can't even read this. People buy Rolexes to indirectly tell everyone how much money we can throw away on useless objects. 
Hey, look what my watch can do. Ring, ring. Hello? You'll never believe what Brian just bought. What'd he buy? A watch. Really? <sighs> what a nerd. Oh, Brian. I'm the kind of person who doesn't really care about my outward appearance. A lot of times in high school, we talk about having a healthy self-image of ourselves, and teachers would say stuff like, Don't listen to the people who call you ugly. You're beautiful. And all I could think was, there's people saying I'm ugly? For the most part, I haven't really tried to even learn anything about fashion. Most of the time when I get dressed in the morning, I wear just whatever's the cleanest. Like, I don't even know my pants size because I wear basketball shorts all the time. I think I'm a medium. My parents taught me the value of hard work by making me pay for all my clothes. And I am 100% on board with that parenting technique. I think even the super, super rich parents should still make their kids buy their own clothes. Because if you just buy your child anything they want, then they're going to turn into a-holes who just expect everything without having to work hard. Those are the types of kids who grow up to flex all their money on people and who leave their basketball cards all over the cramped dorm. And also, buying your own clothes makes you think harder about what you're going to spend your precious dollars on. You don't want to waste your money, so you have to pick clothes you really like. Except my mom told me I couldn't buy anything with skulls on them. She said they were too edgy. And you know what? Fair enough, Mom. Looking back, I'm glad I skipped that emo edgy phase. Pepperoni phase. Minecraft phase. Oh. But why didn't you let me express my true self, Mom? Thank you for not letting me do that. In the seventh grade, I went through an I need to look cool phase. And one time, I saved up quite a bit of money, so me and my mom went on a shopping spree at Kohl's. Hashtag not sponsored. I was going to impress everyone. I was going to look so cool with my brand new two pairs of jeans. I'll get this normal blue pair, and then the exact same pair, just in case I spill ketchup on the first pair. That's another reason why I'm pro have your kids pay for their own clothes. So that way they learn how expensive clothes shopping is. Seriously, two pairs of jeans was $70. Do you know how many Pokemon cards I could have bought? Probably enough to make my own pair of poke pants. And that's when I learned about the magical land of Goodwill. At Goodwill, you could buy mediocre, questionably stained looking jeans for a fourth of the price of Kohl's. And since I had to buy all my clothes and I was unemployed, I was at Goodwill every other Saturday for that half off deal. You're at Goodwill and everything's half off. That's like a double sale, people. Here's the thing. Typically, clothes stores have a certain style they specialize in. Tilly's, you know you're going to get that hip L.A. style clothes. At Old Navy, you know you're going to get that white boy, white boy Ohio look. And H&M, you know you're going to get demonetized. But when you step inside your local Goodwill, you don't know what you're getting. You get every style of clothing all in one place. This, this thing has a really uh, face. I, I am Mario. Not I'm not sure how long this is going to stay around. And there's a this face on the premium. left. And then there's my little pony. I got my favorite t-shirt from Goodwill. I even wore it to this panel at VidCon. You know, the panel where I didn't even talk into the microphone, so you couldn't hear half the words I said. Ah, but James, I don't want to wear clothes that have already been worn by other people. They're gross. Ew, cuties and herpes. Ah. Yeah, yeah, no, that's true, that's true. You don't know who else has worn your clothing. But then again, you could be wearing something that was also worn by... The odd ones out. Yeah, that's right. I donate my clothes to Goodwill. Reduce, reuse, recycle, baby. Why would someone make a pair of pants out of Pokemon cards? And give it away? I'm not saying don't buy expensive clothing. Buy whatever you want to buy and can't afford. If there's two shirts, one is $40 and one is $5, and you really, really like the $40 shirt and hate the $5 one, you should get the $40 shirt because you'll end up wearing it more often, so you get more use out of it. In economics, there's a term used to measure how much happiness a product will give you, and it's called utils. Sometimes buying more expensive things will give you more utils of happiness, so it's worth it to buy expensive clothing. But for me, I get way more utils buying a shirt for $5. You cannot put a price on all the oodles and oodles of oodles I get for wearing a shirt I like for five dollars. You can wear your Supremes and your Amber Crombos or whatever all you want. I just don't think it makes a lot of sense spending that much money on a white t-shirt with an ironed-on logo. There's no material in that shirt that makes it as expensive as it is. Oh, never mind. What you're really doing is paying for the name brand. So you might as well staple two $20 bills to your shirt and write in Sharpie, Look everyone, I got $40. But again, if you like the design of a white shirt and a red rectangle, then you be happy wearing it. I'm not telling you what to wear, but I will tell you this. Don't judge someone 
based on their clothing. That's like the most shallow thing a person can do. Even if someone is wearing old hand-me-downs or a really expensive name-brand t-shirt, don't treat people differently because of their clothing. There's a certain YouTuber going around, I'm not going to say any names but I will draw pictures, okay. who's teaching kids that their value as a person is correlated to the amount of money they spend on clothing. Don't do that. Okay, real talk over now. School uniforms! People who support school uniforms say that uniforms are better because then the students don't have to think about what they're going to wear the next day because everyone has to wear the same outfit. But, like, I already don't think about what I'm wearing. That's probably why I'm naked right now. Okay, that's not entirely true. I'm not just going to walk outside wearing a... I don't know, a pink poncho. I have standards. I just buy all the cheap clothing I think looks nice. In high school, I mostly wore solid color v-neck t-shirts. And one time a kid on the very last day of school told me, James, you always wear solid color v-neck t-shirts. You're like a cartoon character. That's what I'm going for. I've always wanted to be a cartoon. I don't think you realize how much I love cartoons. One time I bought those shoes with the really fat tongues. I thought they looked cool, but they certainly didn't feel cool. They didn't have any support for my soul. I couldn't go running in them, so what was even the point? And apparently you're not supposed to tie the laces of those shoes. I'm not sure. Someone just told me, hey man, you know you're not supposed to tie the laces of those shoes, right? So I had to bury the laces inside my shoe, and I was constantly stepping on the sharp aglets. <laughs> And all the cool kids saw my shoes and said, Hey, James, those are some pretty fat tongues you got there. Do you want to come sit at our lunch table? And I said, No, being cool sucks! So now I wear tennis shoes everywhere. Some of you watching are in 7th or 8th grade right now. And you might be going through your own I need to look cool phase. And I just want to say to you little youngins, you don't need to impress or prove yourself to anyone. Wear whatever makes you happy and that you can afford. And you still have to follow the school's dress code, which is a whole other can of worms. I'm not encouraging anyone to break the rules, okay? All I'm saying is, at the end of the day, what really matters is that you're in seventh grade. Nothing you do will make you cool. I I'm sorry. Everyone regrets seventh grade, okay? Just start putting on deodorant, do the homework, you'll get through this. Aw, oh, man, what a neat video that I made. Sorry it's been a while since I've done an end card. I've been traveling and speed running. The moral of this video is that you shouldn't... Guys. Video, guys. Okay, 9 plus 8. 17 minutes so, so far. 17 plus 8. Twenty-four minutes, I guess. <laughs> okay, class. Spell Wednesday. Uh, I, I don't know how to spell Wednesday. Well, James, just sound it out. Oh, okay. So, like this? No, James. It's Wednesday. <laughs> you said sound it out, and that's how you sound it out. <laughs> you think you have it bad? Do is spelt with an X. <laughs> I think it comes to no surprise that I'm terrible at spelling. I feel like everyone in life falls into two categories. Either you're good at math and bad at reading, or you're weird. And if you've seen my other videos, you know that I'm a math boy. My mom told me that I have dyslexia because she has dyslexia and I have all the symptoms, but we never got that diagnosed by a doctor, so... <laughs> you can't make me take my meds, mom! A lot of times what I do to cover up the fact that I spell lower than a first grade level is I will purposely misspell words to the point where it's obviously a joke. You thought I was doing that to be funny, but it's actually because I have zero self-confidence in my spelling and I don't want anyone to point out my mistakes. I mentioned this in a different video, but in elementary school, I was put into an honors program, and everyone had to take spelling tests a grade ahead of their level. And by everyone, I mean everyone except me, because I failed every single spelling test. So I had to take spelling tests that were on level. Ew. Every week when we took a spelling test, I would have to move to the back of the classroom, and the teacher would stand right next to me. She'd call out everyone else's word, which had like eight syllables, like anti disestablimentarianism and then she'd turn to me and give me my on-level word. James, your word is... Cat. <sighs> also, one year, a class did a spelling bee, and everyone had to participate, and, like, I didn't even care that I was the first one out. Hey, that's almost my name. Another thing that I mentioned in a pretty old video is that I used to have a speech impediment when I was little. I couldn't pronounce my Oz, and I talked like this. I I'm good now. 
Obviously. So every other day during school, I had to go to a speech therapy class, and one day the teacher who taught me how to pronounce my Oz, I'll call her Mrs. Kool-Aid, gave me this sheet of paper with a bunch of raindrops, raindrops on it, and she said, for every raindrop on this page, say the word raindrop. But then she just left the room, and I said, huh. Well, I'm not going to do this. I didn't say Wayne Drop a single time. Because, like, no one was even there. No one would have seen me not saying Wayne Drop. So why would I do something that I didn't want to do? But then the funny part is when she came back, she asked, Are you finished saying your raindrops? No. Well, how many did you say? I didn't say any. <laughs> You stupid child. I told her the truth for some reason. I don't know why. It was probably the easiest lie in my life to get away with. But that's why I remember this story. I'm still mad at myself for telling the truth. And I had to say raindrop a bunch of times in front of her. And she would only go to the next raindrop until I said it right. And it was terrible. It really hurt my feelings. Since I was struggling with reading and spelling, I had to get an IEP. An incredible, excellent personality. Which meant I had to go to a special class for a little bit during school. And the teacher who taught this class was none other than Mrs. Kool-Aid. Oh, yeah. I don't know why I said it like that. I don't remember anyone ever telling me I was put into a special needs class. I just remember going into speech therapy every other day. And then those classes slowly morphed into teaching me how to read and spell. I don't know, I thought reading this book would have helped me talk better. Two other kids were in the reading class with me. And I remember the day when reading for me just clicked. Us three were given a simple sentence to read. It was about bees. It was so simple. It was literally just to defend their hive from wasps. Bees don't sting the wasp. Instead, they all crowd around the wasp and flap their wings to raise their body temperature, heating up the wasp until it dies. And then Mrs. Kool-Aid asked us, okay, how do bees defend against wasps? And the other two kids said, they sting them. And I said, what? No, you moans. Didn't you weed this? Ah! The words on this paper have meaning when placed in a certain order convey information. Also, I never want to get hugged by a bee. So I was in these classes all the way until the sixth grade. I was getting better at reading. I still wasn't great, but I was getting better at it. And one day, Mrs. Kool-Aid said, you know, James, you should try competing in the Battle of the Books. Battle of the Books? Battle of the Books? Battle of the Books? Finally, reading sounds fun! At my school, Battle of the Books was this competition where students were given a list of four books to read within a time limit of, like, two months. I don't remember how long it was. And after however many months it was, the contestants would sit in an auditorium and take turns answering questions about the books. And whoever got the most questions right would get a pizza party. And that's where the battle part comes in. We'd kill each other for pizza. And then there were two more rounds, each with four... Are you serious? Oh, yes. Are you serious? Taken by the T-Rex, I'll snap his Jesus. Ultimate fidget spinner guy. Stay shop, stray shopping carts. Yeah, 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 I... Little puppy's drunk again. The relaxed rabbit is just, just stop having problems. Goodbye. <laughs> what is that a kid's book? <laughs> it's snowing! That, I'm pretty sure that is a dog getting neutered. Oh, Hard, ch Hard choices. I did not like this film. <laughs> Grandpa voted for more books, so there was a total of 12 books you had to read. And we were allowed to be with a partner, so my partner was TJ. Hey, TJ, do you remember Battle of the Books? Yeah, man, it was great. Now, you're probably thinking that four books in two months isn't that hard, especially since they're kids' books. But as someone who didn't read any books on my own outside of school... You remember Battle of the Books? Yeah, man, it was great. Now, you're probably thinking that four books in two months isn't that hard, especially since they're kids' books. Are you serious? The Very Hungry Caterpillar. The official handbook for RuneScape. Yes, this is super 100 plus good jokes for kids. Think about the T-Rex. But as someone who didn't read any books on my own outside of school, it was a challenge. But I discovered a way to cheat the system. I discovered something called audiobooks. Instead of having to sit still and read the book, I could just have someone read the book to me. And I would get through the book so much faster. I'd be able to read a book in about eight hours as opposed to reading a book 
Never, because I would never be able to finish a book on my own. And I was actually able to understand what was going on. I legitimately thought that listening to audiobooks was cheating because of how well it worked. So I never told anyone my secret. Until just now. Please don't tell anyone. Also, I didn't just turn on an audiobook and start playing video games. No, I sat in my bed next to the CD player and followed along with the book, and sometimes I even took notes. I've wanted to talk about my love for audiobooks for so long, but I can't, because then people will think I'm getting paid by a certain company, but I'm not, and I'll prove it. Instead of wasting your money on quality audiobooks made by professionals, you guys should all check out LibriVox.org, where you can listen to free public domain audiobooks, which means there's only old-timey classical books on it, like Aesop's Fables, which, in my opinion, is all you need. Anyway, TJ and I did the battle of the books, and for one of the rounds, TJ was sick, so I had to answer the questions all by myself, and I never forgave him for that. And also the whole time I was keeping track of everyone's points and me and TJ got the most questions right. My math skills are finally being useful. I was already craving the pizza. After the last round, the teacher said, Okay, I'll tally up all the points and let you all know who the winner is in a couple of weeks. But since I was keeping track of everyone's score, I already knew we won. I turned to TJ and I said, TJ, guess what? We already... Oh, this is the round that you were sick on. Oh. How did I not notice that until just now? But then, a couple of weeks go by, and I'm not hearing any news about a pizza party. I was expecting to walk into class one day, and there would just be a pile of pizza boxes waiting for me. But that never happened. The teacher in charge of the competition was the librarian. So one day, I went up to her and I asked, So, uh, did you ever say who won the Battle of the Books? Uh, also, my favorite pizza is barbecue chicken. And she said, Oh, these two fifth graders won. What? So the Battle of the Books was for both fifth and sixth graders. I was a sixth grader, so I went to all the sixth grader battles. But apparently, there was some low-life fifth grader who got every single question right and stole my pizza party. And that taught me a valuable lesson. Even when you work hard, you don't always get what you want in life. But that's okay. Because one day, you'll be an adult and you can buy all the pizza you want without having to read first. <laughs> <coughs> Hello there. Any of you down for a game of soccer? I, I mean football? This is 100% James. This isn't someone else doing the end card. This is me. This is James. I would never ask someone else to make an end card for me because I was too lazy. <laughs> you guys should check out the channel G Get Get Mad. Uh, Get Mad. Am, am I pronouncing that right? He helps me edit my videos for my second channel. That's right. I have a second channel with a total of six videos. Count them six. Six videos. And also, as per usual, I need to thank... Okay guys, that was my reaction to three of the odd ones out videos. And if you want me to react to more videos, then just tell me in the comments. Bye!